Hey everyone! So today, we're going to take a look at the new update for Quen Image Control Net. Quen Image Control Net recently launched two models. One is the DiffSynth Control Net, and the other is the InstantX Control Net. Now, InstantX has been working on Control Net, especially the Union model for Flux, and now they've applied that same Union model to Quen Image as well as Diff Scene Control Net. When this control net model first launched, it was only using LoRa models, and I noticed that about five days ago, they've since updated it to use union models and grouped all the control net types into one model file. So now instead of having to download different control net types separately as individual LoRa models, everything's packed into a single file. Another way you can use the diff synth control net is by downloading it with a model patch. One unique feature of the diff synth control net is the Quen image in painting control net model patch. That sets it apart from InstantX and other LoRa models from DiffScene Control Net. When you apply this model patch, you can actually use the Quen image model as an in-painting model for image editing tasks. So, I'm going to test these models, one using the model patch files and the other DiffSynth Control Net I'll be testing with the LoRa models. Right now, it's super convenient to just download one LoRa model called the Union DiffSynth LoRa. And with that, you can use various control net types like line art, soft edge, normal and open pose. The Instant X control net, by the way, comes from a different team that trained and developed the control net models. Their union models are also available on the Hugging Face repo. As you can see from the details here, they trained with pretty high resolution images this time using BF16, a batch size of 64, and a learning rate of 4E to the minus 5. And here are some showcases using line art, canny edge, depth map, and open pose the most common control net types we use for image generation. One of the nice things about using the Instant X control net is that it works just like a regular control net. You place it in the control net folder in ComfUI and connect it using the usual control net custom nodes. But with DiffSynth, you're either loading a LoRa model or you're using this other method, the model patch, which is a pretty new file type in ComfyUI for running workflows. Now, the diff synth control net does require some updates to your comfy UI in order to run. So, like in this screenshot here, I did a comfy UI git pull update, and you can see that some nodes got updated, some related to Quen image control net, and some related to the Quen image model. You can see these two files were updated to handle control net in comfy UI, which now includes the new features. I'm going to test three types today, each with a slightly different way of connecting things like I mentioned earlier. There's the diff synth control net with LoRa and the model patch loader, which I'm specifically testing. The patch loader is the method of loading diff synth control net using the in paint model type here. Then there's instant X, which is super simple and straightforward. You just add the model as a control net model, connect it the usual way with standard control net nodes. Nothing fancy. If you've been using Stable Diffusion, SDXL, and have made your way up to these newer image generation models, you'll be totally familiar with this setup. No issues at all for existing Comfy UI users. So first, let's try out the InPaint model. This one's pretty interesting. First, you load it into the model patch loader. These files go into a new subfolder called model patch inside your main model folder in Comfy UI. So basically, just drop your InPaint model files in there. Then you'll see it appear in the drop down menu. Just select the in paint model. Over here, I've got a character, and I'm going to in paint this masked area. The region inside the mask using a text prompt like red hair, and see how it turns out. So, as you can see, the image is processing. And by the way, you don't really need the canny custom nodes here for the in paint workflow. This template includes the Canny Edge preprocessor because the model patch can also support other control net types like depth and canny. But if we're just focusing on using the model patch for in painting, we don't need that extra stuff. So we'll just use this workflow as is for Quen image in painting and switch over here. And there you go. We've got the in painted image of the character. Pretty solid result overall, especially considering we're using a very basic sampler. Everything here is kept super simple. No fancy tricks, no resizing, nothing extra. We're just passing the image and the mask region into this new node. 
After updating your comfy UI like I showed, you'll get this new node for Quen Image and the Quen Image Diff Synth Control Net. This is the new node that handles the Control Net model trained by Diff Synth. As you can see, you can pass the model patch directly into this node along with the Quen Image VAE and the Quen Image model data. The two main things you need to focus on here are the image and the image mask. There's not much going on in the settings for this node, just the strength, which controls how strong the control net influence is. It's a lot simpler compared to the traditional way of applying control net, where you also have options like start percent and end percent to control when the control net kicks in during the sampling process. So I'd say applying control net the traditional way gives you more flexibility and control over how it affects your image. Sometimes you want to influence only part of the generation process by percentage, not just adjust strength up and down. Yeah, that's the trade-off between these different ways of loading control net models. That's why for in-painting, I'll just stick with the diff synth control net using the model patch. It's simpler, has fewer options, and it works well enough for this task. Next up is the LoRa model method for loading diff synth control net. Moving on, now we're testing the diff synth control net using the LoRa model method in the workflow. With the union control net LoRa model, it's really simple. You just load it in and connect it between your diffusion model and other LoRa models like the Quen image lightning model. Then pass the model data, all that purple line you see here, straight into the case sampler. No extra custom nodes or new native nodes needed for the model loader. One thing you do need is to load the conditioning. Another way to do this is by using a reference latent for both positive and negative conditioning. The reference latent comes from the VAE encode node where we feed in the pre-processed control net image like a depth map. I'm using the dev anything v2 model here to generate the depth map, then pass that image into the VAE encode to turn it into latent data. That way, the control net image data gets injected into the conditioning. So this is different from how you'd use the Quen image diff synth control net with the native node connection, but both methods work performance wise. Now we should do a comparison between the union control net from diff synth and the one from instant X. So let's say I've already generated this image using the depth map from my anime style reference. It works fine. Now let's see what we get with the same image using the instant X union control net. I'll plug in the same prompt into my other workflow here and see what comes out. Here's the generated image using the Instant X Union Control Net. Of course, you can use the depth map to create the control net effect, and as you can see, there's a noticeable difference. Even though I use the same text prompt and seed number as the previous workflow with the Diff Synth Union Control Net. Okay, so I've set up both Union Control Nets in the same workflow for testing. The top one is the Diff Synth Union Control Net, and the bottom one is the Instant X Union Control Net. Both have the same input text prompt and the same control net reference image. Same sampling settings too, same steps, CFG, seed. Everything's identical. Let's try another image, maybe a close-up shot of this demoness character, since the prompt allows for an extreme close-up. Let's run it and see how it turns out. As you can see, both are using the same depth map from the preprocessor, top and bottom, same input. By the way, we don't need that subgraph anymore because we're using the auxiliary preprocessor, which is good enough for handling all kinds of preprocessing. So we can simplify how we choose different control net types. All right, the first result from Instant X looks pretty nice. Good style transfer from the reference image using the depth map preprocessing. The one above uses the LoRa method. That's the diff synth union LoRa model creating this image. So, yeah. They look different, even with all the same settings. Control net strength, seed, steps, everything. But we get two totally different results, and clearly, the Instant X one, the actual control net model, sticks much closer to the depth map pre-processing. The form and shape of the character, the face direction, the pose, all match much better. With the LoRa model method, you can still see the general shape from the pre-processing, but the character's form isn't as accurate, it's just different. And here's the image comparison, two distinct results from two different control net approaches. Let's try one more, this time a wide shot of two people talking. We'll tweak the prompt a bit. And here are the results. 
The left one, using the real control net model, is way more accurate. You can clearly see the transition and structure from the pre-processing image. The diff synth one? Kind of off. Look at that person standing on the left. It's weird. So I'd say, if you want more accuracy and precision in form and shape from your reference image, the best way is to use a real control net model like InstantX's Union Control Net. Training actual control net models gives you the most precise results. Whereas using this newer LoRa style method to embed control net features doesn't give you the same level of accuracy from the reference. Even though this one has a more abstract oil painting style, it's still clearly different from the other. Here's another example, this time with open pose. First, I've got this reference image. The preprocessor clearly detects the character in the middle and the background character too. As you can see, both workflows use the exact same open pose preprocessing image. But the results are totally different. The one using the LoRa model is way off. It doesn't match the pose at all. But when we use the actual control net file and apply it the traditional way, we get a much better result. The pose is way more accurate. And even if I change the text prompt to a different scene and run them together, the instant X version still comes out really close to the reference, like the character's face is looking in the right direction. The Laura version? It's okay this time, the face direction is fine, but the body position is still a bit off. This one's from the instant X control net, and this one's from the diff synth Laura control net. So, as a conclusion, I'd say I personally prefer the Instant X Union Control Net, using the traditional method of loading actual Control Net model files and applying them the way they're supposed to be, with the native nodes. It just gives you more precision and better results. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. See ya.